Today we're talking about killing it without killing ourselves. The last time we talked about this subject, we talked about uh, what if we didn't go back? What if we didn't go back to the way things were pre-pandemic? What if we chose a, a wiser, calmer, more skillful even way to approach life? Well, today, well, last week in that series, we talked a bit about learning to believe as Jesus believed. So today I want to dig into that even more. What if we began to believe as Jesus believed? So that's our subject today. Do beliefs change actions or do actions change beliefs? Or is it some kind of synergy that maybe it begins with a belief that changes an action, which drives the deep the belief even deeper and then on you grow, so to speak. And if that's the case, if that were possible, I wonder how we could get to a place to believe like Jesus. Because if we were really honest with ourselves, we'd have to admit that Jesus believed very differently than we believe. He looked at the world in a very different way. So how did Jesus believe? And actually more importantly for today, how do we start to believe like Jesus believed? Certainly we could read his words and that's what we've done. We've done a lot of Bible reading, maybe small groups. Maybe you haven't, maybe you have. Maybe we've done a lot of learning about Jesus. But the problem is, is getting information about a thing isn't really life-changing. That's an assumption. You know, we say knowledge is power, but knowledge without action isn't power. Knowledge that empowers us to act, that, that's pretty powerful. But we need to learn to believe like Jesus believed, and to do that, we have to come at it from his view. Jesus was a Hebrew. In the Hebrew mindset, uh, you didn't believe a thing until that thing impacted your actions. Believing and doing were inseparable in the he Hebrew mind. But then the Greek world, which that's where the gospel that we have heard comes from, because the apostles, who were Hebrews, preached the gospel to the Greeks, the Gentiles, and that's where we received the message from. Their world, knowledge and belief were entirely different things and could be unrelated. And so it created this dualism in the way that people thought that we are... I hate to say infected with, but that we are definitely influenced by today. But in Jesus' mind, doing was believing. The action was connected to the belief. So here are some things that Jesus believed that we could do something with today. First of all, Jesus Christ believed that he could hear from God. Let me share the scripture with you. But Jesus told him, no, the scriptures say, people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus replied, but even more blessed are all who hear the word of God and put it into practice. Jesus Christ believed that the word of God could change the world, and he believed that he could hear from God. He could hear that word. Not only did he believe he could hear it, he believed you could hear it. He believed that you could hear from the creator of the universe, the, the holy one, the eternal one, that you could hear from him, and in hearing from God, it would change your life. And so that was something Jesus deeply believed. Now, how did Jesus hear from God? Did he audibly hear the voice of God? At times, he did. In fact, at times, people around him also heard the actual voice of God. But Jesus also heard from God in, in a myriad of different ways, in things that he felt, things that he saw, emotions that he experienced, the way that people behaved around him and toward him. And everything that Jesus Christ saw, he could pick up on things that the Father was saying. And it's true for us. We need to, need to understand that the language of God is spoken in many, many ways, and God intends for us to hear it. Now, am I saying you don't need a Bible to hear from God? I most certainly am not saying that. I want you to understand that we do need the Word of God, but we do need to change the way we approach it. We need to stop studying the Word of God for knowledge, and we need to start listening to the Word of God for obedience. Such and um, tuning in to the Word of God will change your life and it will change the world. And Jesus believed that. He knew that when you and I, when you or I heard the voice of God, it would change us. Another thing Jesus believed, Jesus believed that prayer would change the world as well. One day soon afterward, Jesus went up on a mountain to pray and he prayed to God all night. At daybreak, he called together all of his disciples and chose 12 of them to be his apostles. You know, Jesus believed that what started or what happened in the natural world in which he lived started in the courts of heaven. Think about the book of Job. Do you remember Job's troubles in the book of Job and how, much, how many problems he had? Where did all of that start? It didn't start with Job. It didn't start with Job's mistakes or failures. It started with the accuser. 
Satan in the courtroom of heaven trying to accuse Job. That's where it all began. Let that be a lesson to us that a lot of things, most things, maybe everything that manifests in the natural begins in the courts of heaven. So Jesus spent a lot of time in prayer, which meant he spent a lot of time in the courts of heaven. He spent a lot of time with God in the spirit, listening to what God had to say and asking for God to do things based on what God had already said. So what if what if we believe that? What if we believed that as followers of Christ, people that God has paid the way for them to enter the throne room of heaven, go before the mercy seat, what if we believe that the things that happen in the natural started in the, the courtrooms of heaven, and every day we realize there would, one, be an accuser there to try and accuse us and people that we loved, but also there would be Jesus there praying for us without stop? And what if we, in our spirits and in our hearts, and in our comprehension and understanding of things, went to the throne room of God and began to, to there ask for things to happen in the natural, commissioned from the throne room itself, from the courts of heaven. And, and think of the synergy that could happen here if you have someone who's listening for the word of God, listening to the voice of God, seeing and beginning to hear things that God's sharing with them. Now they go into court, the courtrooms of heaven asking God to, to manifest, to bring into the natural the things that God is showing them by his word in the scriptures and through the things that God is saying to them through the voice of God, the things that they hear from God. What an energy and a synergy that would create in a life that believed that God's word could change the world and that prayer could change the world. But there's another thing Jesus believed, and this is this is just as important as the other two. It is so important that we believe that the Word of God can change things and that prayer can change things. But you've got to also understand that Jesus knew that He was going to change the world. Jesus specifically was going to change the world. Listen to this short verse. I have come to set the world on fire, and I wish it were already burning. Yes, Jesus said that because Jesus knew that he was coming to set people free. And that was going to cause a lot of problems because here Jesus was going to put on the earth something that had never been before, not since Adam, and that was free people. People who were free from all the systems and the cultures and the influences of the world. And that was going to cause problems. But here's the thing. Jesus is going to do that. He is the answer. I am not the answer. No matter if I were to be famous, if I were to write lots of books, no matter if I had a lot of huge following, if I were some famous preacher guy, I will never be Jesus. And people need to connect with Jesus. They need to connect with Jesus. Hear me. Try not to get angry. They need to connect with Jesus more than they need to connect with church, more than they need to connect with you, more than they need to connect with any other thing on this planet. They need to connect with Jesus Christ. Why? Because he's the life. Church isn't the life. Church is where we gather because we have the life. Church is where we encourage each other to go and share the life. Making disciples. We're making disciples of Jesus. Never are we making disciples of ourselves. And the, the minute our gospel includes us, it stops being the gospel. Jesus is the only answer. He's the world changer. And our job is evangelist. And we are all evangelists. Jesus told us to go into the world and make disciples who make disciples. Read it up in Matthew chapter 28. And so that's our job, to make disciples, but not of us, to make disciples of Jesus. Because Jesus is the world changer. Jesus is the answer. Now here's the thing. We've talked about the, the word of God. We've talked about prayer. And we've talked about Jesus being the world changer. Here's the thing. What are you going to do about it? Because faith isn't knowing Faith is doing. Faith is believing something so much that you act out of it. And here's the thing. Sometimes faith is weak. It's like Peter walking on the water. Jesus says, come on, walk toward me. Faith, yes, it's when Peter took that step. But he had opportunity to increase his faith with each step, celebrating that God kept him on top of the water rather than sinking into the water. Where Peter lost his way is when he began to look at the storm and see how impossible it was for him to be doing exactly what he was doing. That's how faith grows. We hear from Jesus, the word of God. 
and we take steps of obedience. And as we obey, our faith grows. You want to kill it in this life without killing yourself? Start to believe like Jesus believed. And if you're going to do that, you're going to have to actually obey the commands of Jesus. When you do, it's going to be amazing. 